All right, welcome to our lesson on an introduction to conditions. Conditions are going to be great. You have all these variables sitting there in the memory of the computer keeping track of things. We just don't want to draw them to the screen. We want to use them, check them, and depending on their value, we want to do different blocks of code. Easier just to show you. In our last segment, we had the player, and in the create method, we would given the player life. Now, when we went over the poison, the life dropped. And for now, we just let it go all the way down, 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 right into the negatives. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to show you your first condition. If the player hits zero or below, we're going to end the game. Okay, so here we go. When the player hits the poison, we'll add a little more code. We take the life down. This is a great time to check to see have they hit zero or below? Conditions in programming is basically just a question, the if statement. The if command is pretty well part of every programming language out there. It's very powerful. It what lets you decide, should I do this code or not? And it looks something like this. You just say if life. Now I could say equal zero. So if the life equals zero, do whatever is between these curly braces. Between the curly braces is called a block of code, if I haven't mentioned that already. And this block of code, and it can be big or small amount of code, will only be run if this statement is true. So if the life is zero, I'm just going to use that old show message box. little friendly message there and then we'll end the game and to end the game I think the command is game end okay and that's it giving a little quick test of this I'm just gonna stay over the poison let my life drain down we go and too bad so sad it's actually popped this up before drawing out the screen. So the life variable is actually zero right now. It just hasn't had a time to draw and the game should end. And that's it. Now normally that's not a nice way to end the game with a message box, but you know we'll add on to that later on in the course. So that's your standard if statement there. Okay, most pretty well simple as we could get. Another good one you can do here is, if you remember a little bit of uh, grade seven or eight or nine math, is you can say less than or equal to zero. This wouldn't make sense here, but you could say if greater than or equal to zero, you have your equal sign and you have your not equal. That's discussed in your little note page on variables that you've hopefully had a quick chance to read over before this lesson. So you have a couple options there. So we'll just leave it at this. No harm putting less than or equal to zero there and we'll leave the poison in there. Now this variable belong to the player. The player's running the code, right? So you just mentioned life. What I'm going to do now, something similar with the wall objects. What I'm going to try to add here is that when the wall objects get hit a certain number of times, the walls blow up. So you can basically run around and destroy the room. Now to do this one, okay, the wall has no variables here. I don't see a create method. Um, I don't think any variables have been made. So I'm going to quickly add a variable to the wall object just to test this out. So in the create method, I'm going to give the walls a variable called damage. I'll start the damage out at zero. Now, sort of important to know here is there's a lot of walls, every single wall on the screen will have its very own variable called damage. So if you have a hundred walls, yes, there are a hundred variables in the memory of the computer now. One for each wall. Okay, that's why they call these instance variables because every instance owns its own variables. When the wall gets hit by an arrow, I already have a whole bunch of code in there. Let's extend it a little longer. So I do all that. I'm going to tag a little more down here. I'm going to say that 
this wall's damage goes up by one. And I'll ask a quick question. I'll ask an if. I'll say if the damage has reached three, then I'm gonna make an explosion, or have we already made an explosion? Okay, we don't quite have an explosion there. I'll make an explosion. Effect. Create above. At X and Y. Small one. Gray. Let's make this window a little bigger for you. And time to destroy the wall. So once again, if asks a question, you put whatever statement there you want to check. If it's true, it'll run whatever's between the curly braces. If this works properly, we should be able to hit the walls three times to destroy them. And number three. So, loads of fun here. Walls have a little bit of health. Okay, it's a typical thing you see in the game, right? Things have health or points or hit points or strength, and you can knock it down, and eventually something happens. Very addicting, I don't know why. Anyways, you get the point. That works well. Okay, that's it for this video. There's another video coming after. It has more examples of this stuff happening.